Hey, welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today we have uh, something entertaining for you, I think. And so if you're in the market for a new John Deere tractor, or maybe a loader to put onto your tractor, we'll give you the loader lift height of these models here. We're gonna give you the loader weight capacity that you can lift with these loaders. We're gonna show you how to take the loaders on and off as well. And also you're gonna get some bonus footage here too, comparing to some older models. So stick around, let's get a closer look. Also, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. We'd love to have you join the family here. Make sure you take a look at our tractor comparisons, uh, even loader comparisons that we're going to have for various models too. But if you're in the market for a tractor or a new loader, uh, maybe even another attachment, take a look. I'll try to put a link to the playlist up top here. Um, you can see what you have going on there with a 1 Series, a 2 Series, maybe a 1 Series versus a 2 Series, an E versus an R, the differences that you're going to find. So check it out. So we do have a 120R loader. This is going to be mounted on a 2018 John Deere 2025R. You'll most commonly see this loader mounted on a 1 Series tractor like the 1025R the 1023E. But the new 2025R does share this model. Next up we're going to have a, this is going to be a 220R loader, alright? Now this is what you're going to find on the rest of the 2 Series including the 2032R and the 2038R. This model here though is a John Deere 2520. This tractor didn't have a loader on it, and so we uh, had a, a new loader thrown on. And then over here on, on my baby, a 320R loader on a 3046R, okay? See a little look here side by side. I guess I don't have them quite in a straight line there, but they're, they're pretty close. And now bucket size is going to be one uh, characteristic of these loaders. Typically, you know, the smaller the loader, the smaller the bucket option. Um, you can get a light duty 72 inch material bucket on, on this large one here, the 320R, uh, which would be, you know, another six inches out here and, and here roughly. Uh, you can also get an HD bucket, which I actually have for my tractor, but um, left it at home accidentally there. So I just threw on a different bucket there just to give a good example. And then here you're going to have your typically roughly the same size buckets as small as a 49 inch down here which isn't very common and then uh, up to a 53 inch or so on the 220R. Again you could purchase larger buckets if you wanted to if you're going to use them for light materials like uh, mulch that kind of thing it would probably be okay. Alright so let's sum this up real easy for you guys here. I've got all these specs off of John Deere's website, and so we're going to use that information. I, I do think there may be a few discrepancies, um, but we do have some past information to go on because this loader here is going to be similar to an H120 loader. Uh, this loader here is going to be similar to a H130 loader and even a 200CX loader. And then this loader here is going to be similar to an H165 or a 300CX loader. And so we do have some uh, historical data there that will give us a roundabout number as well to know that we're in the right ballpark. Sure, there may be some improvements and efficiencies or slight tweaks that they made, uh, but overall I think we're going to be near uh, the historical numbers. Alright, so with this 120R loader, to full height about 20 inches out from the, the pivot point there, you're going to lift about 500 pounds, maybe a little bit more. On the 220R loader, to full height about 20 inches out, you're going to lift around 800 pounds. And on the 320R loader, again to full height, about 20 inches out from the base there, is going to be about 1,100 pounds. A full height lifting capacity isn't really practical for a lot of folks. Yes, there are some people that do need to lift all the way up to the maximum height to be able to get over a, a dump bed, for instance, on the side side of a trailer, uh, or maybe you know some different applications where they need to get up to a roof where they're raising material or, or something like that. Uh, for a lot of folks, that 59 inch measurement is pretty relevant, and so I'm going to go ahead and let you know what the lift capacity is at that 20 inch out increment, uh, which is the most relevant. So now we're going to go ahead again with the measurement, uh, the load capacity at about 59 inches, about 5 foot. Again, we're going to be about 20 inches out here to that height. And so with this loader here, you're going to be about 600 pounds. Again, that's the 120R. Maybe just shy of 600 pounds, but just a ballpark figure. On the 220R loader, again, basically 5 foot, about 20 inches out, you're going to be about 1,000 pound lift capacity. And then over here on our 320R loader, at that five foot uh, measurement there, about 20 inches out, you're gonna be about 1,600 pounds. 
in my mind, most folks are going to be using the, the loader buckets to move uh, landscaping materials around. So mulch, rock, dirt, that kind of thing, where you're not looking to raise it all the way up high. And in fact, in most cases, you're going to be leaving that as low to the ground as you can uh, and then just dumping it and spreading it. And so that does help with stability of the tractor and, and always keep that in mind too for safety as far as tipping and rolling goes. Um, you know, also with pallet forks, you might be picking up some uh, other attachments you have or, or actual pallets or something else, but again, you're going to be having those at a pretty low center of gravity down here where you can really maximize the loader capability that way. So one of the other things I want to show you now are going to be how these loaders come on and off and they're going to be very similar to models in the past so there's nothing to be afraid of there it's a proven design uh, very easy to use once you understand how to do it and so I will fire these tractors up and show you but you're going to have a, a bracket here same thing on the other side of the 120R and the 220R loader and you're going to flip that up same thing on the other side you'll work the joystick a couple different directions turn it off always remember to work your hydraulic joystick after the tractors off to relieve any built up pressure and then you can release some fittings and your your tractors or your uh, loader is going to be off and and you can use your tractor for something else Again, here you can see the same thing on the 220R, same type of brackets there, same concept. The 320R is a little bit different in that uh, this other side might be a little bit easier to see, but you're going to have a little clip here, get that in focus, you're going to have a little clip here that you're going to have to pull out and then you're going to pop this bracket up forward and there's the same thing on the other side as well but uh, the rest of the the process is the exact same I will tell you one of the biggest pieces of advice no matter what loader it is what manufacturer it doesn't matter make sure you're on level ground okay that's gonna be the biggest benefit to you to getting it on and off if you are on uneven ground it's gonna make it very challenging and very frustrating to deal with so plan ahead and uh, it'll go a lot smoother for you I'm gonna go ahead and fire this tractor up And what I'm going to do, I'm going to push down, I'm going to push that loader forward almost to lift the tires off the, off the surface. These might be off the surface. And then I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to go around to the other side lift this one up as well. So I'm going to pull back on it. And if you can, take a look, I'll try to show you this, uh, this bar right here, this green bar, that bar is going to start to go down. So now the, the loader is completely off of the parking stand. Or, um, oh, I'm sorry, the loader is completely off of the tractor and it is just sitting there. Okay, it's, it's completely self supported by this this parking stand right here that goes down and uh, the, the front is supported obviously by the bucket. So, what you're going to do after that is you're going to make sure that you rotate this loader joystick in every direction. It relieves the built up pressure that's in the hydraulic lines down here which you'd still be able to get these these fittings off of here but you would never get them back on there just be too much pressure and so if that does happen and I'll show you here in a second what to do but let's let's take one of these fittings off and so I'm going to go ahead and pull back on this collar right here just like that and you can see it just pops right out so you're gonna repeat that process for all four of these fittings and then you can just take the hose and just kinda of throw it up here and rest it here or whatever you wanna do with that but put the dust caps on and the covers there so again if you forget to if you cannot get a uh, fitting reconnected it's because there's going to be too much pressure built up and this won't uh, compress and allow it to open up so there's too much pressure in this line here and so what you do just take a little rag put it over top of here and then push that fitting you can take it and just kind of push it around and push it into a piece of steel right here or if you have a piece of, uh, of wood or something like that nearby just press it into that the 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 rag the what you cover it up with is going to prevent any uh, spray from getting all over you and, and anything else and so that's just a safe way to do it there and it also protects the end of the fitting too but after that it will release the pressure and you can plug it back in so I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this now uh. 
Okay, we're reconnected. And I can give that a little tug there and tell that. And I'll go ahead and turn the tractor back on without getting things too oily. And I will reverse the process. I think I'm going to have to hop on the tractor for this. Alright, so here we go. Driving forward slightly. They're getting down in there. They're latched. They just latched right there. Work that joystick the other direction. Boom. We're good to go. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing on the 320R loader just to show you how to take that on and off. And again, we're talking about these brackets right here that are going to be... I'm going to put the same down pressure I did with the 120 and 220R. I'm going to push down with the loader. It's going to take pressure off of this area here on either side. There's the exact same thing of this uh, little bracket contraption here on the other side of the loader too. I'm going to re release it on both sides and then push this little, this little thing up right here. It's going to release it. And again, you've got a... A parking stand there there's a little feet for the parking stand down below you'll see that down here we go okay so first step put that down pressure on and then we're gonna go ahead and release release that there okay if you can see that so I've looked I pulled this out off of that little pin there and then put the bracket up You can see there there we go that's up so again this right here is that little you know that little bracket that this bar is, is is holding on so now both sides are released and I'm gonna use my joystick again we're gonna be pulling back now Just doing this slow so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. You can see how it releases right there. Okay. So here you go. You can see these are the little perches or the stands or the mounts, whatever you want to call it. They're going to stay there. Everything else does come off. Get a look underneath. Again, here's a parking stand that's built in. It just sits there and hangs out. I mean, this loader's off the tractor now. And then you're going to have the same concept here. I don't think I need to repeat it, but just uh, skip back in the video a little bit if you missed it. But these collars pull it back and then um, pull the fitting out. You just repeat that for each one of your couplers there. All right, here we go, remounting. I'm going to be pushing forward a little bit. And sometimes you do have to drive forward just a little bit or drive backwards a little bit. You want to make sure that you're aligning your brackets on either side. Make sure they're aligned, okay? So here we go. Pushing forward on the loader joystick. Again, I'm doing this, this slow so you guys can see. And at this point, once I've kind of lifted those tires off the ground, you can, you can see that there. Go ahead and rock this back. Stand up here. Rock that back and put it over, right over top of there, okay? And let's see if I can reach this and do this here or not. Get you, get you a look there. So I'm going to be pulling that back, pushing that down, and it locks right in place there, okay? And then let's see if it works. Boom. Lift it back up just like it should be. Okay, so here we go on the 120R. And now just so you know, this tape here is, uh, is uh, three inches from, from here at this point to the other side over there. So I'm gonna drop this down, I'm gonna start here. My tape is three inches as well. So I'm gonna take 62 inches there plus three, and you're gonna have 65 inches with a bucket level like this. 65 inches there uh, from 
to be able to get over the edge of a, a, a trailer edge or whatever it might be and, and then start your dump after that. Uh, next up, the 220R loader. Here we go. Same thing, this is not scientific, but this is again close. So we start there. We're at about 71 and a half plus three, so 74 and a half inches. Now the 320R loader. That bad boy's up there a little bit higher. Okay, so the 320R loader, we've got that all the way up there, working it down. And you can see there that 90 inches plus three for our tape is gonna be 93 inches. All right, so that's a pretty significant difference there. So 93 inches high, approximately, on the 320R. What did we say, about 74? I think it was on the 220R. And what, around 62, 63? Man, I have a bad memory. Right around there on the 120R. Okay, so it's time for some bonus content here. And so what I've done is I've brought out a couple other models in the 2 Series. Have an H130 loader here on a 2025R. And then we have a model 200CX on a 2520. We're going to compare that with the model 220R over on our other 2520, which is currently, again, that model, the 220R loader is found on the 2032R and the 2038R that are currently in production by John Deere. Okay, so I do have all three of these tractors lined up now, and and uh, 2520 over here, 2520 over there, with a uh, old style 2025R sandwich in the middle there. And so this is going to be highlighting three different loaders: the 200CX loader, the H130 loader, and then the 220R loader. And so I'll give you a little profile shot here. You can see the three first. Take a look at these two kind of side by side there. They are virtually identical in, in every way. Look at the, the curvature, the boom up top there. Uh, you know, this plate right here on either one that's connecting the arms. Everything about it. Take a look down here at the, at the base of that loader there and compare it over here. Okay, and so now let's go back and and take a look at the 220R versus the H130. And so you're gonna notice a little bit different styling now, a little bit updated on this, this plate here. See from this side over, a little change to the angle of the pitch. Overall, quite similar. Bottom frame there, the perch is still essentially the same. Okay, however, the new style 220R loader is rated to lift about 1,100 pounds to full height, while the older H130 and 200CX is going to lift about just a little over 1,000 pounds to full height at those pivot points. Now, if we're talking the 59 inch, you know, roughly 5 foot mark for each one of these machines here, you're going to be right at about 1,250 to 1,300 pounds. This is rated for a, a few pounds more than the older two versions, but nothing significant. All right, so we've got the tape on the 200CX, and we are reading 69 plus three, so 72 inches. The H130, we got that leveled up pretty much. 68 inches plus three, so 71. And now some of these measurement differences here are gonna come by way of, I tried to be on a flat piece of ground here, but there's a little bit of pitch, a little bit of unevenness. Um, but so that may account for some of this if the back ends tipped up or tipped back a little bit more than the front end of another tractor But uh, we're th within an inch there and to be honest these look To be the same so and they, I mean, you know the angle of the edge of the bucket might be a little bit different too But so those are essentially the same. Let's go ahead and try the 220R loader here. All right, so we've got the tape up on the 220R And we're 71 and a half so it's about 74 and a half right there again I guess uh, is consistent with our last measurement, so we have a pretty flat piece of ground right here. So we do gain a few inches here with this new 220R loader over the previous generation.